So this recording is going to cover some of the natural factors and cultural factors that make kiwifruit orcharding possible. Our case study is John Corbett's farm. And if we look in the picture here, John Corbett's farm is this area between those shelter belts. Um, it's down Beach Road, and if you hang a left um, halfway down Beach Road, you'll turn down Pukikura Road, and we can see that John Corbett's farm is not far from the intersection. It's an area of established avocado, oh, sorry, kiwi fruit trees at the rear of the property. Looks like there's um, a bit of a a trial patch of perhaps limes. They look a little too small to be avocado trees. There's some kiwi fruit vines of medium age, and then there's some newly established vines at the front of the property. You can see the area used for domestic purposes. We have a house and a shed, and some ornamental trees, and a um, area of lawn as well. And it looks to be a large equipment shed at the rear of the property. And we can presume that that's where he keeps his vehicles and equipment for servicing the orchard. You can see it's not too far from um, the pack house, which is down this corner here, the Hume pack house. Uh, it's probably only a couple of minutes walk away. There's a flower um, business under greenhouses in, uh, on the corner here. And we can see um, plenty of other kiwi fruit orchards around as well. So, why are there so many kiwi fruit orchards um, close together? There's a few reasons for this. Um, first of all, the area has is flat, covered in flat land, and that's important for an orchard. Um, all farmers would ideally like a flat farm, but it's the orchardists who can pay the most for it because they make the most money from a given area of land. And the land in Katikati is very good. Um, it's covered in alluvial soil, which means uh, soil that's been brought down from rivers, and that material initially started off as the Kaimai Ranges and they've been weathered over time and eroded and that material has been brought down by rivers and deposited um, on the edge of Tauranga Harbour. Over thousands of years um, it's developed into some very good free draining soil so it's particularly good for growing kiwi fruit. Something else you need for a successful kiwi fruit orchard is uh, plenty of sunshine. And in the Western Bay we're very lucky, um, in Caddy Caddy we get around 2300 hours of sunshine per year. And that's up with the, um, the highest figures in the country. Nelson, Blenheim and the Western Bay are plenty, as well as Whakatane, and get a lot of sunshine. And you need that for fruit to ripen um, during the late summer. Something else you need for a kiwi fruit orchard is plenty of rain. Um, in this part of the country, we normally get about 1100 millimetres of rain per year uh, and that's that's the amount required you need at least that for a kiwi fruit orchard to operate successfully if there's dry periods you also need access um, to water for irrigation and on the Corbett farm they have a bore that they can tap into if, uh, if we, they have a dry period we've talked about the soil already that's an important part of maintaining a good orchard. Just move those so we can see them a little bit better. Those are the natural factors um, that contribute to making a successful orchard. There's also some cultural ones too, some human ones. And one of those is being in close proximity to a town. There's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, kiwi fruit are perishable, which means um, they don't last forever and you need to look after them especially if you're going to be sending them overseas to very demanding markets like Europe, Japan and North America. So it's important to be um, close to your transport centres so when you package your kiwi fruit um, it's quick and easy to send them off to the market. Being in close proximity to town also has the benefit of meaning you've got access to workers and in Caddy Caddy, there's about 3,500 people who live in the town, and a lot of them are involved in the horticulture industry. We have um, people who um, participate in seasonal work, and they stay in Caddy Caddy during the, the peak periods in the horticulture season. We also have pickers who come from other countries, particularly other Pacific Islands, and we have many tourists who participate in the process too. 
Being in the Western Bay of Plenty, which is the main kiwi fruit growing area in the country, also means there's access to expertise. So there's people who can give advice about uh, growing your orchard. Most of the research centres involved with kiwi fruit are located in the Western Bay. And of course, being near to so many other kiwi fruit orchardists, there's lots of help and lots of expertise available. And of particular importance is to have access to a pack house. So the pack house is where the fruit is um, graded and sorted. It's packed into trays and also stored before being shipped off to overseas markets. And these are very capital intensive um, facilities and it wouldn't make sense for every orchard to have its own pack house. So people work co cooperatively and the pack house services a large number of orchards. These are some of the natural and cultural factors that influence the location of kiwifruit orchards.